Hi everyone, it's Evangeline here at U-Trailer and today we'll be taking a look at the Yakima on-ramp 2 bike electric bike rack right here on our 2020 Ford Edge. So the Yakima on-ramp is really cool because of how it's designed around your heavy electric bikes. One thing about bike racks with great weight capacity is it also takes a great amount of effort to put them onto the bike rack. The Yakima on-ramp answers this by having a ramp. So if that's something you're interested in, if you want something that makes it a lot easier to bring your bikes up and then off of your bike rack, this might be something you would be interested in. Now this also works with other bikes too. So in this video, we'll go through your different specs, the different features of the bike rack, just to see if it's the right fit for you, your specific bicycle and your 2020 Ford Edge. So we'll take a look at the first feature, which is that it tilts away. To do so, there's two different knobs you have to use. So this one on the right, just pull that out of the way and let it swing. Then you're gonna have to kind of like pull and then uh, or like press and then pull this other knob. Let's see if we have access to it from the other side, right over here. Okay. So this might be a little bit easier for you in case uh, you can't reach through your bikes. You do have to kind of lift up on the bike rack though just to give it enough clearance in order to push down. So bring that up and then bring that bike rack down and just let that drop. All right. So as you can see here, we got a really good close up on how that tilts away. We have a good tilt. Why would you wanna tilt your bike rack away? Well, if you wanna access your hatch here on your Ford Edge, you can see how we now have plenty of clearance between the door, our handlebars, our pedals, that way we can just get into our trunk and grab whatever we need without having to take our bikes off. And when we're ready to go, we just close our door and wait for that to close. Then we can just lift our bike rack, right, bike rack right back up. And just like that, we're back on the road. So the lever clips it um, as you have it in the upright position, position. Just don't forget to put this knob back into place right there that's going to secure it so it's a little bit of an effort but you can see we had a decent amount of space in the back in order to maneuver those levers you just kind of have to give it a little bit of effort okay so let's talk about the way our bike is mounted here this has a bike weight capacity of 66 pounds per bike if you have your heavy electric bikes one thing to remember is please take the um the batteries off of your electric bikes before you put them onto the bike rack just because that extra stress and vibration on the road is not good for those batteries and they'll live longer that way and your bike will be kind of lighter overall. But anyways, the way our bike is mounted is we have three mounting points. So one and two wheel straps holding our bike down and then we have this frame mount. So this frame mount is very easy to manipulate. You have this knob right over here, which loosens it, allowing you to move it up and down. And then it swings side to side. It also rotates. That way you can accommodate frames of different shapes and sizes. What I have here is my women's bike and notice how our frame goes down, making it kind of tricky to use with other bike racks that have a hook. With this, I don't have to worry about it because I can just mount it to where it's easy for me to go. So when I want to take the bike off, I start at the wheel straps. You just press this lever and that releases the strap, allowing you to just lift that up and just try to move that out of the way of your wheels so it doesn't get tangled up in your spokes when you take your bike off. Right there, that should be good. Let's go over here to the front wheel press that lever, take that strap up, and move it to the side. And before I release the frame mount, let's set up our ramp. So we have a knob here in the center. You're just going to loosen that knob just enough. We'll leave that right there. Just enough so that we can take our ramp off. Now you have two different options for this. You can put it on this side, or if depending on where you're parked, you think it's safer to put it on this side, you can do so. This clips right into your tray. So go up and then down, and now it's secure and ready for your bike. Now, we're gonna take our bike off. So the way to do so is you kind of support it with one hand as you press this lever, 
push that strap in and then just kind of slight tilt it out just enough so that you can have enough clearance to swing this out. Another option for you is you can now bring our mask down. That's if someone else is helping you out. But then even with that mask right there, you can now start ramping this down. Very easy to do, especially with a forward edge. You have a really good incline right there. So let's put this over to the side just so that we can take a closer look at the bike rack itself. Now, when you don't have your bikes on, what I recommend doing is please put your ramp as well as your straps away neatly. It looks a lot better that way and it's less likely for your straps to be flopping around in the wind, helping them last that much longer. But while we're putting stuff away, notice how everything works. That just ratchets down to secure your bike's wheel. You have that strap on both sides, which is pretty cool. The maximum tire width you can carry with this, because you notice how we have those trays and those cradles, is gonna be up to 3.25 inch tires. Something to keep in mind if you have, let's say, your fat bike tires. Um, taking a look also at the mast itself, notice how we have this nice cushion, as well as your different grooves, just to give you some extra grip. You have that rubber padding over here. You can move around to fit around your frame. This tightens down too. Just make sure to be mindful of where you put that um, lever so it doesn't come in contact with your bike as you travel around. Okay, whenever you have anything on your hitch, there's going to be some kind of length added to the back of your forward edge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some measurements just to see exactly how much does the Yakima on ramp add to the back of our fore edge. Measuring from our bumper to the end of the bike rack right over here, it sits at 26 and a half inches. So pretty normal for a two bike platform rack, still a length to keep in mind whenever you back into your garage or try in to park into a tight spot. You do have a mid-size SUV here, so Usually this wouldn't add too much extra space, but if you have a tiny garage, something to remember. Another measurement we'll take a look at is ground clearance. So ground clearance is measured from underneath the end of your bike rack. So right here, it sits at 19 inches of height. And we're gonna measure over here by the shank just to see the difference. Right over here at the shank, it sits at about 11 inches of height. So ground clearance is going to be extra important whenever you go up your steep inclines like your driveways or hills. Where our hitch is at right now on our Ford Edge kind of gives you limited ground clearance. That's why I highly recommend hitch accessories that give you that rise kind of like this because as your front goes up, your back goes down, so you'll greatly appreciate that your bike sit higher up off the ground. Now, what if you're not planning on going for a bike ride? but you also don't want to take your bike rack off completely. What you can do is you can move this into a more compact or portable position. To do so, we have this knob over here because we need to move the mast down first. So pull that knob and just push that mast down. Now, make sure that your frame mounts are secure and tighten them down to do so. Once that mast is down, you can now fold this up. Now remember how we tilted it away. You're gonna go through that exact same process in order to fold it up. So one lever or one knob, and then here's our second knob. Then this goes up and against our vehicle. So with it up in this position, it looks like it comes kind of close to the bumper. So we'll take some measurements to take a look at it. But remember, when you do have it in the up position, don't forget to make sure that everything is secure. So closest point, that's going to be from our frame knob right over here to our bumper. Notice how it sits above it though. So that actually gives us a clearance of an inch and a quarter. And this is a sturdy rack, especially if you have these parts tightened down. So it's not getting any closer than that. Length now added to the back of our vehicle is gonna be from the bumper to the end of the shank. 10 inches. Big difference compared to when the tray was down. You'll definitely want it in this position 
when you're just planning on riding around town or if you want to be a little bit more compact and not take up too much space in your garage. Now, with it folded up like this, let's talk about how it looks behind our vehicle. I do really like how it fits, especially within the width of our vehicle. Our rear window is also completely visible. And our backup camera and our license plate are not covered at all, which is really good to see, as are our taillights. So that means as you are driving down the road, you're both safe and legal, even with your bike rack folded up. Let's also talk about how this fits into our hitch. So we have a two inch shank, um, which fits into our two inch hitch receiver. You do have your different options for the Yakima on ramp. You can get this an inch and a quarter shank too, but I do recommend getting the two inch one if you have a two inch hitch receiver. Now we do have an anti rail bolt that goes through and the lock is the cable lock that is included with the spike rack. So that cable lock goes around your bikes and into your hitch lock, securing both your bikes and your bike rack. Now, um, you do get a tool from Yakima in order to tighten that bolt down, but what I do, and what I recommend you doing too, is you can use a 24 millimeter socket wrench or a ratchet wrench, and that can help you tighten that down quickly and easily. Because with that anti rail bolt engaged, as we do a shake test, you can see how, as I try to shake our bike rack around, just a minute that road sway and vibration. I mainly was moving our vehicle, showing that that connection between the bike rack and the hitch receiver is nice and secure. So my personal thoughts about the Yakima on-ramp bike rack is I really like how it is designed for your electric bikes. It is designed for your heavier bikes. Even my women's bike is slightly on the just slightly heavier side and I have struggled, I struggle lifting them onto my bike rack sometimes. That's kind of what this answers. If you want the easy way to ramp things up onto your bike rack, this is the way to do it. Other bike racks have ramps as well. Something I could recommend if you're not interested in the way this uses that frame mount is the Kuat NV. That's slightly easier to use. You do have to get the ramp separately, so that's a pro and the cons. This one, the ramp is attached to your bike rack so you won't forget it compared to the NV where the ramp you have to store inside of your vehicle and could forget sometimes. So you have your pros, you have your cons. Hopefully this video helped you out with figuring out if this is the right fit for you and your bicycles. But this was a quick look at the Yakima on-ramp 2 bike rack right here on our 2020 Ford Edge.